Hi guys, it's me Swastik and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can create an economy system with a fully fledged stock market simulator. Before we begin, let me tell you about what I mean by a stock market simulator. Well, we won't be using APIs to get real world stock data. What we'll do instead is we'll simulate something like that using Discord activity. What I mean by that is every user in our Discord server will have a stock associated with them and depending on how active they are, the stock's value will change. So just like a company's value in real life, we can kind of associate that with the user's activity in a Discord server. So by buying the stocks of a user, what you're doing is investing in how active they're going to be. So I'm planning to make three videos uh, in this series. Uh, in the first video, I'll talk about how you can set up the database and we'll be using SQLite, which is a file-based database, which is easy to set up. So um, we'll be using that. Um, and uh, in the next video, I'll talk about how we'll make these stock values change based on the activity of the users. And uh, in the final video, I'll show you how you can make these graphs, the, these uh, stock market graphs uh, using matplotlib. So let's get started. Now, since we'll be using SQLite for this, you will need to install the library AIO SQLite. And uh, you can do that using this command right here. And once you install AIO SQLite, we can begin. All right, let's take a look at the code for our Discord bot. First, import the basic modules that we'll need, uh, OS, Discord, Async IO, random math and time. We'll also import database from DB. We'll be creating this right now. So this is our bot.py file. We'll also create a db.py file. And I'm also importing this plot stock trend function, which is in plot.py. I'll talk about how you can create these plots in part three of this video. I'm also importing .env because I have the bot token in my .env file. And I'm importing commands from Discord DXT because I'll be creating a simple message command bot. I'm not using slash commands here. I'll be just using normal message commands. Then we'll set up the intents and we'll set the message content intent to true because we'll need to read the messages if we want to um, check the activity of users. And um, we'll create the bot with that. And then we'll set bot.db equal to this database class. Let's take a look at how this database class works. And so inside of our db.py, we have imported AIO SQLite and we're also importing data class and uh, list and optional from typing. We're using these two to create our user model, which is just a class. It's a data class, which will just be a wrapper for the data that we get from the database, because it is much easier to, you know, have uh, the data be inside of a class compared to just lists. Okay, so this is our user model and each user will have an ID. This will be the same as their Discord ID. Then each user will have a stock value. So like I said before, each user has a value associated with them, which is what their stock value is. And this value will be changed based on how active they are. Then we have a, a trend value. Now the trend value is basically again, an indicator of how active they are. So how this will work is let's say every minute, the bot will check if, a, if the user sent a message. If they did, that means they're active. That means their stock trend should be higher. And in case they are not active, um, it should be lower. So the bot will update the user's trend value based on how active they are. And this trend value will affect the stock value in return. So it's kind of like uh, the stock value is the distance and the trend is like the velocity. So the velocity will change the distance per unit time. So the velocity affects the distance. Similarly, we have our trend, which affects the stock value. Then there is the effective trend, which is basically the trend, but it is modified in such a way that we can use it to directly update the stock value. Um, you don't need to think too much about it right now. I'll explain this in the next video in, in much more depth. But for now, just keep in mind that we have all of this in the user class. And then we also have their balance. This is basically how much money they have. And all of these values are floating point values, basically decimal values, except for the ID, which is an integer. And then we have a static method called default. So this lets us create a user with just their ID. And these are the default values that a user gets when they use the bot for the first time. So their stock value is set to $100. The trend is zero, the effective trend is zero, and they're given $1,000 to start investing with. Now let's take a look at our database class. This is the class that will handle all interactions with the database. This is so that you only have to write SQL commands in this file itself, that is the db.py file inside of this class, so that you can just use the functions inside of your bot code and you don't need to write direct SQL commands in your bot code, all right? So when we initialize this, we set our db path to be this, uh, data.db, it's just a file. So you can just create a new file and call it data.db and save that, all right? I already have it saved, so I won't change that. Next, we create a function called create tables, which creates the tables that the data will be stored in. All right, we'll have two main tables. In order to connect to our database, we'll use this async context manager, async with aosqlite.connect. We pass in the db path, which is our data.db. Uh, as our connection object here, what we do is we execute these two queries. The first query is create table if not exists users. So we'll have one users table and in the second query we will uh, create a stocks table. All right, so the users table will contain all this data that we had created for our user class. 
so it's the same pretty much the same id which is an integer which is the primary key stock value which is a float which is not null trend is also float effective trend is a float uh, balance is a float everything is not null by the way since we are using sqlite uh, float will be treated as a real number and big int is just an integer sqlite does not differentiate between these types but in case you decide to use some other database you should probably take a look at how the database handles the data right so should you use float or double things like that and we'll have another table called stocks this will store all the data related to what stocks a user has bought so it will store which user which is denoted by the user id has bought what stock id which is basically another user id right let's say i decide to buy a stock of some other user so my id will be here user id then the stock id that is the user id of the other user whose stock i'm buying will be the stock id this will be how many stocks i've bought all right so this is the amount and again all of these are integers and finally we commit these commands so what this does is it creates these tables if they do not already exist in the database so what we have to do is since this is the first thing that should be done by the bot what we'll do is go back to our bot.py file so inside of our on ready event the first thing that we do is we'll print that we have logged in and then we'll create the tables with await bot.db.create tables all right we also have these two lines here uh, this is just setting up the announcements channel this i've set to be the general channel of my discord server but you can change this id to the id of your general channel in your server and after that i have a bot.loop.create task update market this is the main function of our bot i'll talk about this in the next video but um, this is the function that's run every minute and it updates the stock market it updates it checks every um, user uh, as in it checks it checks the activity of every user and based on that it changes the stock values um, so this is the most important uh, function we'll talk about this in the next video all right let's take a look at the on message event now instead of the on message event we'll first return if the message was sent by a bot otherwise the message will be passed on to the process commands function which basically handles all the commands after that this is how the users will earn some money so the way i want the users to earn some money is basically every minute or in this case every half a minute if the user is active if they've talked at least once they should get the they should get some money instead of having an earn command or work command i just have this right here you can use the code right here to create a work command if you want but i won't be doing that so let's take a look at how this works so if await bot.db.user exists we haven't seen this function yet let's take a look at it but before that if this user exists and the message.author.id is not in cooldowns so i have this list right here cooldowns this will have this cooldowns list will basically have the id of whoever talked or whoever spoke in the previous uh, 30 seconds in the previous 30 seconds right here so what happens is if this is the case that is the user exists and they are not in a cooldown already we will increase their balance we'll give them some money so we'll give them i've given them five dollars this is an arbitrary amount and we'll add their id to the cooldowns list and then we'll sleep for 30 seconds and then we'll remove their id so what this does is every 30 seconds if they keep talking they'll they'll keep getting these five dollars all right let's take a look at how we'll create this bot.db.user exists function and uh, increase balance function let's go back to our db.py file and um, let's scroll down here i have some more functions right here so i've created three helper functions that will help us uh, make our queries the first one is fetch one uh, what this function does is it takes a uh, it takes an sql query and arguments what it does is it connects to the database like like before we will execute this query with these args and we'll get the data and then we call away data dot fetch one so it's shorthand for fetching one row from the table so if we just have one uh, row in the table uh, we'll get that using fetch one there's also fetch all so if a query has multiple if it if a query returns multiple rows then this will return all of those rows and i also have an execute uh, function which simply will execute this and then we'll return the result so let's take a look at the user exists function it takes the user id as an input and what we do inside here is we await self.fetch1 and we and we run this query select star from users where id is equal to question mark and we pass user id as a second parameter inside our fetch one so inside of these args right here we pass in user id so this query selects all the users whose id is equal to that user id now since there can only be one uh, we are using this fetch one command so this will tell us if the user exists and it will return that but since we only want to know if the user exists so we want to know yes or no we will return data is not none if it is none that means the user doesn't exist and if it is not none that means the user exists so this returns true or false based on that let's also take a look at how we create a user so we take in a user id as our input and and we return a user object 
So we create our user object, user.default, using the static method that we created before. We pass in the user ID and we create a default user. After that, we will execute this query right here. Insert into users ID, stock values, trend, effective trend, and balance. And these are the values that we insert with these five question marks. And these question marks will be replaced by these values right here, the ID, stock value, trend, effective trend, and balance. So what this query does here is it will insert into the user's table the record for this user, the one that we are creating right now. And finally, we will return that user. So we can use this function to create a user and store them in the database. Next, we have this increase balance function. It takes the user ID and the balance change as an integer and it returns nothing. So what we do is we execute this query, update users, set balance equal to balance plus question mark where ID is equal to question mark. So what happens is we change the user's table and set the balance equal to balance plus the balance change that we got from here. And we do that for the user whose user ID is equal to the user ID we entered here. So this will increase the balance for the user in the database. So let's take a look at how we can fetch the user uh, using their ID. And uh, this is similar to how we did user exists. It's exactly the same as that, except um, if we run the same query from before, select star from users where ID is equal to the user ID. And if the data is none, we return none because um, the user doesn't exist. Otherwise, what we do is we create this user class that has the ID, stock value, trend, effective trend, balance. These are the values that are returned. So the data that is returned is in form of a tuple. So the first value is the ID, second value is the stock value, uh, third value is the trend, fourth value is the effective trend, and fifth value is the balance. So we can use that data to construct our user class, and then we can return it. So this is how we can fetch a user from our database. Let's now go back to our bot.py file and take a look at how we create our profile command. Now this is the command which will have all the details of the user, their stock value, their trend, everything. All right, so let's take a look at it. So, um, we create our command right here using this decorator and these are the aliases, val, prof, and p. Then we have async def profile, ctx, uh, the context, and uh, the member. So users can check uh, the values of other members as well. If and by default it's none. So if you just write profile, it'll show them their own profile. So if member is none, member is ctx.author. So we'll fetch the user using their ID. And if the user is none, we will create the user. All right. What you could do is you could have a separate command for this, as in for new users to register, but I just have it here. So if someone checks someone else's profile, uh, they automatically get added to the database. Next, we have some calculations for showing the trend. This basically divides the effective trend by three and multiplies by 100. I will explain why I'm doing this later on, but for now you can just think of it as a percentage trend where um, this trend will be a value from minus 100 to 100. And then finally, we just create an embed which has all the values. So we'll have uh, the title being the member's profile, the color will be red if the user trend is less than zero or it will be green. So the color will basically show if the stock value is going to fall or rise. And uh, we'll have the members balance shown here. So user dot balance and we use this dot two F. So this is the format string. This will make sure that we only have two decimal places. So the value is only shown up to two decimal places. And then we have the other properties as well. So the stock value, which is right here. And then we have the predicted stock trend, which is also right here, which is the trend value that we just calculated. And again, it also has an emoji next to it. The trend is high. Then we have this stocks up emoji. Otherwise we have this stocks crashing emoji. And um, I also have this market stability right here. I'll explain this again in the next video because I'll need to go in depth into how the stock market thing will work, but uh, you can just leave it for now. Finally, I'm sending the thumbnail to be the user's profile picture. And then we send that embed as a reply. All right. So that's the profile command. And finally, let's also take a look at this give money command, which you can modify to work as an uh, work command or earn command but I just have this for myself so I can give money to anyone I want. So this command is only for the owner and uh, how this works is basically we just take a member and an amount and then we increase the balance directly. So if you want to make a work command, you can do it like this where you just give them some random amount of money every time they run the command. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did hit the like button and subscribe and make sure to comment something below um, if you have any queries or uh, doubts. And make sure to also join my Discord server and the link for that will be in the description below. And the code for this series will also be on my Discord server. So make sure to join. And in the next video, like I said before, uh, we'll make the entire stock market system. So make sure you stick around for that. Uh, we'll have it so that the market changes every minute and everything. All right. So make sure you stick around for that. Make sure you subscribe and uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.